What's up YouTubers? Today I have the NEJE 1000 milliwatt laser engraver printer from GearBest. In this video I will be doing an unboxing and then I'll go through the software just a little bit and then we're going to do a couple engravings and see how well it works and then I'll do my final thoughts on it. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. This printer goes for about $60 at the time of this video and took about two weeks to get here from GearBest. In this first box right here we have the laser safety glasses. In this bag right here we have some silicone, two USBs, and we have some engraving stuff that they gave us. And here is the CD for the software. And then the manual. Next we have the engraver itself. The engraver itself was packed very nicely and well protected, covered in foam and plastic wrapping. To my surprise, the printer is fully assembled. All you have to do is remove all the protective plastic and all the foam in the sensitive areas of the printer. One thing I noticed after I took off the plastic covering is that it is dirty. There's smudges all over, there's fingerprints on it, something that you don't expect when you get a new item. All right got everything unpacked and this is what it all comes with so let's go ahead and now get it ready to print one thing I did notice on these safety glasses I don't know if you can see but they're also really smudgy and oily and they will need a good cleaning before you put them on alright we're gonna go ahead and grab this USB there's actually two of them here one is for extra power and then one is for the actual computer. Next we're going to go ahead and grab this little silicone sheet. It's kind of sticky so that's what's going to be holding all of our material whether it be wood, leather, or plastic or whatever. And we're just going to go ahead and take off those rubber bands right there and lay it down. Just like so. And that sheet's not going to go anywhere. It sticks right onto the acrylic glass. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and plug in our printer. Everything is just located on the side. And just a side note, you will need a USB charger, at least one amp. So 5 volt, 1 amp USB charger for the power portion. It does not come with one. Alright, so once you put in the disk, we're going to go ahead and open up disk. And we are using the DK-8-KZ. Alright, so here is the software for Windows right here. And we're going to go ahead and select step 3, the .exe. So once we're connected to the printer, it's going to come up in Chinese. We're going to go ahead and change the language to English. And this is going to happen every time you open up this program. This program is super simple to use and we're going to go ahead and select the image we want. I'm going to go ahead and use my logo and it's going to give you two pictures right here and you get to select which one you want and I went ahead and select the one on the right because it looks a lot better detailed than one on the left so down here we're going to go ahead and select milliseconds and that's just how long the laser is going to stay on that particular line so for harder materials you're going to want to increase the milliseconds and for softer materials you want to decrease it because it's going to leave a big old black blob on there once we're satisfied with our milliseconds, we're going to go ahead and make sure that it's uploaded to the printer in the top right corner. And then there's a couple steps we got to do before we actually print. First things first, we're going to put it on our safety classes and make sure our material is directly centered. And then right here, we're going to focus our laser. All right, and to do so with our safety glasses on, we're going to be turning this and making the laser dot as small as possible. Once you have it as small as possible, then you are ready to print. There's two ways to start engraving. You could use the software or you can just locate this button right here and you can go ahead and you press it once. And what this does is shows you the outline of your print, the total print area. And you want to make sure that it is not going off your material. You want to make sure it's perfectly centered onto your material. Once we're satisfied, we're going to go ahead and hit it again. And it's going to do one more rotation and start engraving. And this is what it looks like.
Now this is a time lapse and it took it about I would say 30 minutes and this is at 30 milliseconds and I did a second print at 60 milliseconds and I'll show you both. Alright on this side this is the 30 milliseconds and this is a uh, wood I should say I don't think I mentioned it and the other side is at 60 milliseconds and this turned out a lot better but it took about an hour to do. The printer is actually rated for wood, rubber, leather, and it can actually cut paper, but what I wanted to do was try something different. What I did was 3D printed me a little small sheet, and I decided to engrave it and see if it would actually work. And as you can see, this is PETG, and you can engrave your 3D prints. And to me, this is probably one of my favorite things that you could do with this engraver. This was at 100 milliseconds and took a full hour. And as you can see, it actually turned out pretty good for PETG. Next, I went ahead and tried it with PLA. And this is actual real-time print. And as you can see, it is a slow process for this engraver. And this is how it turned out. And it actually turned out a lot better than the PTG one. And here we have a TPU phone case that I etched. It didn't turn out as good as I thought it would, but then again, I didn't have it at 100 milliseconds. If I had it at 100 milliseconds, it probably would have turned out a lot better. Next, I attempted to actually cut cardstock, but it wouldn't cut through cardstock, but it did make a nice little etch into it. Regular paper, it cuts just fine but you have to do it at 100 milliseconds to do so and it actually cuts really really nice those are just some of the few materials that you can use lastly I kinda want to give my final thoughts on the NEJE 1000 milliwatt laser engraver first let's go ahead and talk about everything I like about this engraver I think the price point is pretty fair which, by the way, if I ever get any coupons for this engraver, I will put them down in the link below. Alright, so what I really liked about it was about 10 to 15 minutes out of the box, I was ready to engrave. The software was really easy to use, and you could literally just drag a picture and pick one of the two images that you wanted to engrave. Or you could just even add text just through that program, and everything works fine. The machine itself was really easy to use. Once the picture was uploaded, the button was literally one press for the size of the image, and two, the second press would actually start the engraving. The mini size of the engraver is really nice too. It gives you more options for storage. While engraving, the noise level is relatively low. So all in all, it's a super simple printer to use and you could start engraving within 15 minutes of getting it. So let's go ahead and start talking about some of the negative things about this engraver. The engraving volume is only 38 by 38 millimeters and that's not big at all, especially when the platform it sits on is actually quite larger. One other issue is that there is no safety glass around this engraver. So that means if you're anywhere near this machine, I highly recommend that you wear your safety glasses the entire time you're near it. And I did receive this machine where it was all dirty, had smudges and grease on it, even though it was a brand new machine. And lastly, one thing I didn't like about it was that it didn't come with a USB charger. You have to use your own USB charger. And I don't know, I guess they're pretty readily available nowadays, but maybe you may not have one. So just keep that in mind as well. All in all, I think this is actually a decent printer, and I look forward to testing it on different materials. Alright, so this brings me to the end of my video. So if you found this interesting or helpful, please give me a thumbs up. It helps the channel out. I will leave a link down below where you can get your very own laser engraver. So for my future videos, I just received a Zone Star Dual Extruder 3D printer and it's probably one of the cheapest 3D printers that have dual Z's auto level and a heated bed and I will be doing a review, build, and upgrade videos on that printer. Just wanted to say thank you guys for all the support you give me and thank you for watching.